was my son's birthday and he wanted to go to a Brazilian place called Rodizio. And it's basically guys circle around and they just cut off meat right onto your plates. I'm sure you guys have something similar or you know what I'm talking about. And I got a meat baby right now that's trying to put me into a coma like you wouldn't believe. I have a CDB, a CDP, a CDP, wow. Hey guys, welcome back to the Untrained Unprofessional Workbench. I'm nobody, this guy right here. And today we're gonna to be talking about magazines. The magazines that you see here are not the magazines that are going to be used with this gun from here on out. So these four right here, these belong to my Kimber. And I've basically have separated the family and I need to return them back to the Kimber because I like to keep all my mags together with the gun that it's gonna be used with, so. Now when I purchased this Norinco, it came with this mag, but this wasn't the original factory mag. This is a Colt 45 mag. You know, just having one mag just really isn't enough. I like to have at least three, preferably five, but we're gonna start off with three and I like them all to be the same. What are we going to use? Now, honestly, you know, if I would have been a better YouTuber, I would not have accidentally left the box right here where it was visible, but you know what? I'm an untrained unprofessional, so I guess it's just par for the course. So as you can guess, Checkmate. That's what we're gonna be using. Now, I'd love to tell you that I'm using Checkmate, you know, for one very specific reason, like they're the best in the world, you know, which they could be, you know, they, they have government contracts and they make good stuff, but I'm using Checkmate because I have a Norinco M1A or M14, however you want to call it, clone. And I have Checkmate magazines for that. And since this is a Norinco, I figure let's just keep it all in the family and we'll keep that Norinco Checkmate kind of deal going. So yeah, there's my deep philosophical uh, reason for using Checkmate. All right, so let's look at the magazines. These are the ones that I decided to go with. These are eight rounders and they're in the black or, or blued, I guess I should say. And they require when you first get them, you, you gotta clean the preserving oil that they're shipped with. And it's there to keep this thing from corroding. So clean it off really good, disassemble it, and put a light lube on it, but not too crazy to where it's gonna attract a lot of dust. Now these disassemble really easy and I'll show you how. Okay, to disassemble, you're gonna take a 3 30 seconds punch and come in from the bottom. You'll see a little silver nipple there. You're gonna pop it in and push the base plate forward. This little plate with the nipple on it just needs to be removed and you can do that by pushing it forward or back. Either way works for you. Since we took this off forward, I'm gonna push this forward. Your magazine spring is gonna be held by these lips that are located here on the mag. Now you're gonna to have to walk this thing out from the bottom and you just wanna, come on, pull it and walk it out back and forth. Your first time you'll find it a little interesting, but yeah, it's not too crazy difficult. Your follower does not come out through the bottom because of these lips right here. What you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna grab the top of the follower, you're gonna push in, and you're going to bend it back like that, and then pull out. So, pretty easy to put it back in, put it in at the same angle, and rock it forward. So that is a completely stripped magazine. Let's put it back together. Okay, so to put it back together, you're just gonna do everything in reverse. Take your magazine tube and your follower. You're going to insert it at an angle and then you're gonna pull it forward. You are then going to take your magazine and you wanna make sure that this is oriented correctly. 
So you may think that because of your follower, this has a slight upward angle, that this is the way that it would go. It actually goes the opposite way. Now you're going to go ahead and rock this thing back in around those feed lips, or not the feed lips, the uh, base bat lips, and get it inserted. You're gonna take your plate, and you're gonna come in from the back, move your spring forward a little bit, and you're gonna get it underneath those lips, and then push it forward. You can do it the other way, but then you fight that open spring end and, you know, this makes it a little bit simpler if you do it this way. Your base plate. If you notice here that it actually has this little T slot, or I guess it's actually an L slot on both sides, but the plastic makes a T. So that's to fit underneath these lips. So what you need to do is come in and you actually need to come in from the front. You're going to compress and then push it on. You don't want to push it on too far because this little plate needs to be able to slip into the magazine tube. Push it down and put your plate on. So best case scenario, that pops right into position. If it doesn't pop all the way in, you can Tap it on your hand and usually that'll knock it into place. That's how you assemble and disassemble a Checkmate magazine. Now, something that I noticed with the Checkmate magazines, and it's not critical, it's just something that I wanted to do just for me, and that was that I noticed that even though that, you know, it's like these will function just perfectly fine and it's not even a concern, so it's like if you're not the type of guy that likes to fine tune stuff, just skip ahead, buy the magazine, run it, you know, you'll be happy. But if you want to get that little extra bit of finesse out of the magazine, here's what you need to do. While I was working this magazine follower in my very first one, I noticed that it was rubbing in a couple of areas. And the areas that it was rubbing in, I'll bring this magazine into view, was right there. You see that little shiny spot? That's actually an area that I took off with a file and then hit it with a stone really quick just to smooth it out because it was binding on there. Okay, so the next area that was having a little bit of an issue was just right here at the bottom of this, I think they call it the bullet nose. And you might be able to see that front leading edge right there has a little bit of wear. And Primarily what's going on with that is that when this was formed, that little leading edge kind of gets pushed up. So part of the drag issue that I notice, and it's minor, <laughs> if minor little stuff doesn't bug you, or if you don't care, like I said, just skip this part. It kind of, as you're pushing down, it kind of just ever so slightly tilts back and can kind of like dig into the front end of the magazine tube. But basically, I just kind of took off a, a little bit and just kind of beveled that a little bit just so it cycles up and down a lot easier. And I ended up just polishing so that way it is nice and smooth and it doesn't, doesn't drag or feel like it binds anywhere. This edge right here, which you can see is highlighted right here in the shiny area here let me actually get this better in frame wasn't bad it's fairly smooth but i just made sure that it didn't have any sharp edges on here because this rubs right up against the wall of the magazine tube so i doubly made sure that it was nice and smooth and just very lightly hit it with a stone just to take off any potential burrs Last area was the back of the follower right here. Each one is a little bit different. And it's like this follower actually isn't too bad compared to how this one initially felt. I'm still gonna do everything to this one and the other magazine, but I wanted to show you a before and after. But this area is going to rub 
and you can see where it's rubbing mostly on this side of the magazine follower. But I went ahead and I basically kind of leveled it a little bit and polished it, not super heavy. But also these corners can drag on the inside of the magazine tube and I wanted to make sure that there were no sharp edges on it. So I just kind of gave it a quick little 45 and a polish and also right here on the bend radius. That's what I did to the magazine followers. Now on the tube itself, the feed lips for the most part felt really good. The only issue that I had was it felt like this last 16th, almost an eighth of an inch right here on both sides had a sharp corner. And you really notice it when you get round eight in there and you're pushing down and sliding it back, you're feeling it dig into the metal or into the brass. So I just took a stone again and kind of worked that little corner a little bit just to smooth it out a little bit, just to make it feel a little bit nice and also make the feeding of the magazine so much better. That's what I did and whether you do it is up to you. It's not necessary, but if you want a nicer feeling, a smoother cycling magazine, eh, you might as well. It doesn't take long to do. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate you. I appreciate you subscribing and commenting and liking and the whole nine yards. Um, honestly, I don't say that enough. So I'm gonna make a conscious effort to say it and hopefully not forget about it by the time I make it the next videos.